Um, you know, continue on with uh, our presentation. Last time we talked about the government regulations that have impacted our industry and how they have changed the way we look at cars. And two things have uh, struck out that we need to uh, address a little bit farther. One is a piece of equipment that just showed up automatically here six weeks ago. And the other is squeeze type resistance spot welding. I'll start with the squeeze type resistance spot welding first. Aaron. Next one. Take a look at what we have in squeeze type resistance spot welders. Why are we doing it? Uh, it preserves more of the corrosion protection than MIG welding. Um, it uses less heat in a very smaller area. Looks like the original factory spot welds. Less cleanup. Easy to learn. Most important fact, it produces a smaller heat effective zone, especially on ultra high strength steels. Uh, very important, considering that today's vehicles, 60% or more are made up of these advanced high strength steels. So we have to preserve their strength, and that is through the management of heat. Next. Uh, this is here a heated affected zone. As you can see from a regular weld, how large that is. And with a spot weld, this is blown up about six or seven times compared to that uh, weld over there. Um, take a look at that. Remember this. Go back to this. Heat strengthens mild steel. So if we heat up mild steel, it's going to get stronger. If we take high strength steels, we're going to weaken it. And the ultra high strength steels, it's going to destroy it. It'll actually take the strength of that steel all the way down to a mild steel category. Next. Uh, so, with the advent of these new welders, we have to start to look at what are we going to do about electricity? Because all of these new welders are computer assisted, they use, they're called inverter type welders. And as a shop owner, before you run out and buy one of these welders, the first thing you're going to want to look at, do I have the proper electricity? Um, I was at a shop here just recently where they had two single phase welders but no three phase in their building. Yet they're working on all these late model vehicles and using older technology. So some of the things we want to look at is the uh, wire size. Um, the minimum that we used to say was a minimum of the number six, but four would be the best. But with these newer machines that you're going to be seeing down the line, they have such high amperage, they work at less capacity. Their requirements aren't as great as some of the older machines. So. Uh, depending on the length of the run, how much electricity you have inside your shop, uh, this is going to be a concern of you before you go out and purchase this. So make sure you consult with a uh, qualified person uh, on this before you invest into this because it could double the price of that piece of equipment. Um, again, a lot of shops don't have three phase in their, in their buildings and it's going to have to be brought in. That means le large electrical panels. So again, the cost is going to go up. So when, the, when you go to look at these things, you know, take this all into consideration. Next. Um, this is a spot weld, this is a cross section. I understand this is a fusion weld. What happens is as the heat, heat forms that small uh, concentrated area, the metal melts into each other and then solidifies. And if you take a look at here, I read some about this, you can see the small heat affected zone with the spot welder. Next. Uh, here is a picture of a good spot weld what are we looking for? Uh, silver color, a uh, small little bluish area in the around it. Uh, next, I put in some slides here for uh, general information. There's a nice course with the ICAR welding uh, class, uh, spot welding class. They just came out with it where uh, it's half the time is in the body, is in the classroom <coughs> with discussions, and the other half is a live demonstration out in the body shop, which I think is more appropriate than what in the past. So here's some exa excuse me, examples of some poor spot welds and what you can do to correct them. Next. Um, here are the new generation welders. We call these the automatics. They will measure the thickness. They will determine what kind of metal it is. They will determine the amount of pressure we're going to put at the, at the weld site. So I looked at, uh, I got a response back from four of the manufacturers, uh, the ice the I, uh, ProSpot I-5, Wheelander shells, their GT, uh, the Electron M100 control, and the Carliner CTR-12000. These are the latest generation. So I did a little comparison on so you have an idea of what you're looking at next. Uh, we have two types of guns that uh, come, with either the, uh, come with these machines. 
this is known as the X gun. The X gun has one fixed and then the arm comes into it. This is a C gun where it has a piston and the piston is driven into it. Different little technologies, but um, both come out with the same. Next. This is a uh, critical thing with today's vehicles. This is known as a balancer. It is used to counterweight the weight of these guns. Next. Go ahead. Uh, all these machines are now water cooled. What does that mean? There is water being taken all the way up to the tips. Next. So water goes all the way up to the tips. So all this allows a longer duty cycle for our machines. It keeps the machines colder so we can have more consistency on our welds. Next. Uh, another feature is to measure a total metal thickness. Uh, in the past, we had to have a calipers to measure the thickness. Well, today, these new machines, uh, except for the electron, will come together and measure the thickness of the metal. Uh, that being necessary to determine how much current we're going to use in that machine. So we can come back. So we can see that Pro Spot, we have Shell, and Carliner all will measure the thickness. You still have to do a manual adjustment on the on the current model of Electron. Next. Um, these machines used to have, uh, I'll give you an example, the I-4 from ProSpot uh, had about 9,000 amps. The Carliner C, uh, uh, C500 and 510 had about 9,000 amps. We're up to 13,000 amps, um, huge amount of amps. Um, reduces the amount of time it takes to make a up and reduces the amount of energy necessary too, so we can have more of a control of our uh, uh, the voltage going in and the amperage going in gives us a, a low, smaller heated affected zone. Next. <coughs> Tip pressure, very important. Um, this is where we're going to force all of that liquid metal together and most of these um, with the newer metals have to have over a thousand pounds at the tips and you can see where they are right now. Um, all of these welders will tell you about spot, that spot weld. So that you can generate reports and have it for your files in case uh, there is some litigation on the line. Yes, yeah, these welds were all done and this report will come out. So all of these have it. They also have the feature of being upgradable. So they have either a, uh, uh, a memory card that can be put in or a uh, USB port card going in to uh, upgrade and more and more of these uh, manufacturers are uh, lining themselves with OE so they have certain parameters that they want will also be put into these machines. Next. Um, they, one of the next, uh, go on next one. Um, some of the features that uh, I thought brought up here was single sided spot welders, uh, two of the four come automatically with it and the other two are an additional cost. Um, one of the things you should know is that no OEM specifies a single sided spot wall. But a lot of guys have it there for other types of uh, <coughs> repairs on the vehicle. Next. Um, programmable updates, yes, they all are programmable. Next. I think that's it. And these are the four style guns and machines that the one up at the top is Electron, uh, we land a shell, the Carliner, and then the Pro Spot. So again, before any of you guys go out to buy one of these, do your homework. Very much important before you make this investment because the investment could more than double your cost.